Violent attacks against women on British railways have more than doubled in two years. Figures from the British Transport Police Authority's 2024 annual report show that the number of crimes against women and girls rose from 7,500 in 2021 to just over 11,000 in 2023. Yes, and the number of sexual offences jumped 10% over the same period, while sexual harassment reports doubled. So, let's get reaction to these numbers from the Minister for Violence Against Women and Girls, Jess Phillips. My initial reaction to the data is not one uh, particularly of surprise, but just uh, of upset that it's, it seems that there just is a continuing trend of women uh, being under attack wherever they are, whether that is in their homes, on buses, on trains, uh, or as they go about uh, just their, their ordinary lives. Um, uh, there is, there will be a mixture of an increase in reporting, but there is undoubtedly, we have to look at it and say there is an increase, there is a 20% increase in women suffering violence on our transport networks and take that incredibly seriously. I mean, it would be very easy for me to just say, well, you know, there is one silver bullet to this particular issue, but the, the government uh, have made it incredibly clear that tackling the scourge of violence against women and girls is uh, part of its core mission. Uh, we consider it to be a national emergency. So if this is a national emergency, how do we battle it? Well, when it comes to trains, should we keep women safe by having female-only carriages? Certain politicians have been suggesting this policy, and to debate it, we're joined by broadcaster Khadija Khan, who believes that they aren't the appropriate solution, and journalist Caroline Farrow, who thinks they are. Caroline, we'll start with you. Why, why would it be a good idea? Because, as the figures show, uh, violence has against women and girls on trains has jumped sharply, and women and girls need it under, underlies the importance of a safe space for women and girls. And by women and girls, let me be very clear what I mean. I mean natal females. You know, women and girls are the ones who are the victims uh, of of violence from men. And this is why it's so important, you know, that firstly, we all understand what a woman is, what she's at risk of, and that she has safe spaces where she can go, which are not invaded uh, by men. And I think we would see if we actually had female only carriages, and we also had things like more British Transport Police, more guards to enforce this, so we didn't have men entering women carri female carriages, then actually women could feel a lot safer. Mm, well, Khadija Khan, what do you say to that? I know other countries like India, Japan, Mexico, Malaysia have tried similar things. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, violence against women and girls has risen uh, more than 50% over two years. I mean, the figures are staggering, but it's not unprecedented. Um, I would say that this is a very uh, short-term solution uh, to have segregated carriages for women. Uh, and this, uh, we need to understand the crimes uh, attacking women are sexually, these sexual uh, assaults, they, they are not uh, crimes committed because of women's presence. The onus of responsibility does not fall on women. It is a part of this uh, kind of mindset is, a, is an extension of the same misogynistic mindset that is prevalent in countries like Iran and Saudi Arabia and other Muslim majority countries and India as well, where they think that it the problem is not predatory men, but women. So just segregate them and the problem will be solved. This is not true. I think the recent survey uh, done by National Police Chiefs Council reveals that uh, 2 million women uh, will be affected by male violence every year. Uh, it's, it's a progressive uh, problem. It's not about having segregated uh, carriages for women uh, will solve this problem. So mm. I think we need to look at the root cause of this problem. And what is the root cause? Let me uh, tell you. Let me explain this. Uh, root cause is there is a, a culture of misogyny prevalent in police, in British police departments, where they're uh, not believing the victim is just a norm. So many women, they don't want to report, you know, these sexual assault cases, and they just try to um, pretend as if nothing happened. And uh, they don't go to police to report these cases. There is a lack of confidence in the police, in British police. Mm. We need to understand this thing. 
Interestingly, Caroline, yeah. you're nodding your head there. Yeah. What do you what do you say to the argument that this is treating a symptom, not a cause? I, I have a lot of sympathy, actually, uh, and I think that's right. And, and we need to be really, really clear. It is never women's fault. Uh, misogyny is not women's fault, and it is not women's fault that, you know, they are targeted uh, for this type of violence. Now, um, although I, I think you're correct in that this only solves symptoms. I think we have to solve, you know, if we have a problem when we go to the doctor, we we have something to treat the symptoms and the underlying cause. Now, what I also would like to see, and I think would be very interesting when we analyze these figures. So I've been subject uh, to harassment on trains and I've seen young women be subject to harassment on trains. And almost all of the time, it has been perpetrated by groups of men together. Um, I know you can't generalize, but I think I think it would be very interesting if more analysis was done on who is committing these mm. types of assaults. What, 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 what does it look like? Is it individual uh, solitary men? Is it groups of, of, of men? Who, who is picking on these women? You know, what, what's actually happening? And sure, uh, I, I really understand the idea that if you have a female segregated um, space, it, almost, it can almost lead into this idea that women are bringing it on themselves uh, and women are second class citizens. I, I really understand that. Yeah. But I think at the same time we have to address the cause is not going to be uh, you know the cause is not going to be solved overnight so we solve the symptom but I completely agree that the police are misogynists uh, that the police have lost uh, the, you know trust I mean that's, a, that's that a bit of a generalization uh, we're just running out of time so I'm just going to put the last thing to Khadija I mean we have a little idea of some of uh, recent uh, issues on the trains December last year a man jailed for raping a 20 year old woman as she slept on an underground train in front of other passengers. Absolutely extraordinary. Another man found guilty of one count of rape, attempted rape, two counts of sexual assault, one of outrageous, outraging public decency, sentenced to nine years in prison. July, another man jailed for 20 months, having admitted sexually assaulting a woman on the Elizabeth line as it approached Reading Station. I mean, perhaps the sentences uh, need to be stronger. Um, I, I, as I, I said that, uh... Uh, we need to address the root cause and yes, uh, uh, making the whole system efficient uh, will uh, prove uh, helpful in this regard in preventing these kind of attacks on women. Uh, we need to understand this thing that uh, it was a uh, lack of uh, competence on the part of uh, police department. And uh, this is the reason why many people feel emboldened. I mean, the daughters of this nation have suffered a lot in the grooming gang scandal. And the, what was the root cause? That why these girls were not protected? One of the cause was that police was not believing the victim. So I think we need to emphasize on this thing. There is no silver bullet. I agree with that. There is no such silver bullet and there is no, nothing is going to happen overnight. But we cannot ignore that unless we address the root cause, we uh, make the whole system efficient and, uh, you know, responsive. Mm -hmm. um, right away to these kind of incidents where when they are reported and women are believed who are coming forward i mean it takes a lot for a woman to go to the police and report the sexual assault case and when they are not believed they, they feel let down by the, by the police and i think this is a huge problem in our society and we need to understand absolutely this, this absolutely situation um, khadija we'll have to leave it there um, but it's been really interesting to get both of your perspectives. Gr agreed on quite a lot uh, as well. Khadija Khan and Caroline Farrow, really great to speak to you both. Um, yeah.